My name is Merrick Gertler, and it is my great privilege to serve the University of Toronto as its 16th president. Today, I have the additional privilege of assisting Chancellor Rose Patton in conducting this special honorary degree ceremony. I've been a warm welcome to everyone who has joined us virtually from around the globe. In compliance with public health directives in the province of Ontario to help stop the spread of COVID-19, we are conferring all honorary degrees virtually. In normal times, the ceremony would have occurred during a convocation ceremony, where we gather in person to celebrate the achievements of our U of T graduates and our honorary degree recipients together. So I'd like to thank our honorary graduate, Dr. Warren Washington, for agreeing to accept the University of Toronto's highest honor under these unique circumstances. I would also like to thank Ms. Mary Washington for agreeing to serve as Hooder an important ceremonial role in the conferral portion of the convocation ceremony. It is now my great honor to present Dr. Warren Washington. A pioneer of innovative climate change research and methodology, Dr. Warren Washington has had a transformative impact in his field of study. He is a distinguished scientist, champion for social change, and a role model for young racialized scientists. His career spans an impressive 50 years and includes several presidential appointments in the Carter, Reagan, Clinton, and Bush administrations, where he provided expert advice on global climate change. He currently serves as a distinguished scholar at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. Dr. Washington's scholarship has provided invaluable insight into the role that human activities and natural processes have on the Earth's climate system. He's been at the forefront of developing climate system computer models to understand how the climate responds to forces such as greenhouse gas concentrations, to predict future states of the atmosphere, and to project climate conditions. Moreover, his altruistic vision of global climate modeling, which would provide open access to the climate data required to create a shared model, speaks to his collaborative and pioneering spirit. Throughout his career, Dr. Washington has served as a role model to young scientists from diverse backgrounds and as a mentor in programs such as significant opportunities in atmospheric research and science, targeted towards groups that are historically underrepresented in the sciences. Dr. Washington is a member of the National Academy of Engineering, the American Philosophical Society, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and a fellow of the American Geophysical Union. He's past president of the American Meteorological Society, and he holds multiple honorary degrees. In recognition of his exceptional contributions, Dr. Washington is the recipient of numerous honors and awards, including the Medal of Science from President Obama, and most recently, the 2019 Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement, two of the most prestigious science awards in the United States. In 2020, the American Meteorological Society created a new national award in his honor. The Warren Washington Research and Leadership Medal will recognize highly significant research and distinguished scientific leadership in the atmospheric and related sciences. For his excellence in the Academy as an internationally recognized pioneer of innovative climate change research and methodology, Chancellor Patton, on behalf of the Governing Council, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa upon Warren Washington. On behalf of the University of Toronto and by virtue of the authority vested in me, I have the great honor and pleasure of conferring on you, Warren Washington, the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. As the newest member of the University of Toronto alumni, Dr. Washington, I extend warmest congratulations on behalf of the entire U of T community. I now invite you to deliver your address. Chancellor, President, and families, and most especially fellow graduates, 
What challenges will the world and North America face with climate change? Almost daily, we hear from the media that there are storms causing catastrophic changes and catastrophic damage in the form of strong tornado winds, forest fires, flooding, and yes, even freezing winter storms. The average citizen, eight and 10, senses that the Earth's climate is changing and is caused by human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels. Four out of 10 presently think we are at the crisis stage. And in 2019, the Washington Post and the Kaiser Foundation, Family Foundation, surveyed 30, 38% of the respondents say it's a crisis. Another 30, they say it's a major problem and not a minor problem. Only 8% say it is not a problem at all. You would think that these polls would make it easy for politicians to take action to solve the problem. As it is now, one political party in the United States strongly supports the continued use of fossil fuel and the other party does not. Trust between political parties is another factor which is making progress on climate change difficult to solve. Through the use of observations and climate model simulations, scientists can make reasonable predictions about the likelihood of future climates. Without doing anything about climate change, we will see increasing temperatures, carbon dioxide concentrations, and other greenhouse gases causing rising sea levels and thawing permafrost, as well as increasing climate extremes. Countries are dramatically not cutting their commitment to limiting global warming to two degrees centigrade following the Paris Climate Agreement due to the pandemic. Finally, but importantly, I hope that Canada and the United States can continue to work together on this very important societal issue of climate change. Each of you graduates has an obligation to help preserve this planet for future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Washington. And let me say that you have inspired us with your lifetime career and accomplishments. And today you have inspired us with your words. We are delighted to count you among the most distinguished members of our alumni community. In closing, I offer warm congratulations to you and to all graduates of the class of 2021.